Yup, this is Gamer Guide, and this video is going to be a continuation of our last video for the best power setup in Dyson Sphere program. So if you haven't watched that video, the link's in the description. Uh, that video consists of setting up energy exchangers and transferring energy from planet to planet uh, via the accumulators. So if you uh, don't know how that setup works, watch that video. This is just going to go through an overview of some upgrades that I've made and that system working a little bit at a higher scale. All right, so here's our scaled up uh, input power for our main planet. You see now we're generating 1.21 gigawatts of power. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! So just like before, we're shipping filled accumulators uh, to the planet and we're basically filling up an entire interstellar logistics station with them so letting that max out and then we're shipping back uh, emptied accumulators and so all we did here was just add up a ton of uh, energy exchangers as many as we needed to power the planet we could add up more as you can see we have a an excess of accumulators still and if we needed to we could add up more accumulators with more interstellar uh, logistics stations as well um, but the main changes happened um, on our input planet, so let's fly over there and take a look. So it was a big change in this planet. As you can see, it's actually a different planet and a different system. We moved it from our little Mercury planet to a tidally locked planet um, in a different solar system. This is where we built our Dyson Sphere. Um, but you can see this planet is tidally locked, so it has one face that's constantly exposed to the sun, it doesn't rotate. So uh, originally we built a ton of solar panels um, all over the entire surface where the sun's exposed. And then once we had enough power to build up the, the Dyson Sphere, we started adding up uh, ray receivers and transferring power that way. So although there's still a ton of solar on that planet, uh, we do have a Dyson Sphere built out and we're pulling energy from it. So we have a decent amount of uh, gigawatts we can pull out of this Dyson Sphere. And uh, this is the primary energy source now that's filling all the accumulators going out into the rest of the system. We do have some artificial stars in places, but uh, it's still primarily powered through accumulators. So the, the one nice thing about the accumulators is that once they're actually built, they never waste resources. You just fill them up um, and then ship them back and forth. So it's a, one, of the, one of the benefits of, of using the accumulator energy exchanger uh, system is that you're never actually wasting resources. Um, but we have made some changes uh, to the input export here, so let's fly over and take a look. So here's our line of energy exchangers that are filling accumulators for this planet. It stretches all the way across. Uh, probably actually not a good spot for them on this planet. It's probably better to put them on the dark side of the planet, but um, doesn't really matter too much. It could be moved later. Um, they are filling accumulators, and yet you can see we have three interstellar logistics stations here. The front one is shipping out uh, filled energy accumulators, uh, and the middle one and the, uh, the beginning one all the way on the left are importing empty ones. So you can see the big change here is that there's actually a little factory here that's building accumulators. And what's important about it is that if uh, we stop sending out empty accumulators uh, to our energy exchangers here, the uh, factory will start inputting them. So that line is like constantly backed up as you can see uh, right here in this little T intersection. So if the, if the middle interstellar logistics tower runs out of filled accumulators that are coming in from all the systems, the factory here and those storage and then the back uh, inter, uh, stellar logistics station we'll start filling that line that way we can sort of ensure that we have a constant flow of uh, accumulators empty accumulators going into the system which is important and then the the back interstellar logistics station just ensures that we're constantly pulling uh, accumulators so we, we never want to have a backup of accumulators on any single system so that's basically it, just a little overview of some of the updates to the energy exchanger full slash empty accumulator system. Again, if you haven't seen the first video, this might be a little bit confusing as to what exactly is going on here, so uh, check that one out. And uh, also, the again, this 
isn't as powerful obviously as the artificial star energy system but um this setup will carry you really far all the way into the end game where you can start switching over to to artificial stars all right guys so if you have any questions on the system uh comment below or if you guys want to see more dyson sphere program content let us know um that's basically it have fun